Welcome back to video number two on our bizarre radiology series. So just again, a shout out to radiopedia.org. You should really go here and have a look at a lot of the x-rays that we're talking about. There's even more, there's cases of the days and in-depth tutorials. Great website, but let's get started on the cases we're looking at today. So what is going on here? Well, we can see uh, there's a bit of a, a complicated uh, x-ray in front of us, but this is the right of the patient. And this looks like cartilaginous pinna of the ear. Now, the most striking thing is that there appears to be a barbed, you see the barb here, a barbed hook uh, going through the lower aspect of that pinna uh, with what seems to be a prawn attached to it. Interestingly, you can see the dorsal vein um, of the prawn. Now, interestingly, um, it is known as the dorsal vein, but it's actually the gastrointestinal tract, so the higher density of material in that tract is obviously lighting up in that dorsal aspect of the prawn but the barb will, will stop that hook from coming out very easily in the same way as it, um, it does with fish. This is an interesting x-ray just um, to show a foreign object embedded in the ear. And just as a side note, it's clear that the, the head of the prawn has been taken off um, because this is um, aimed to disguise the aspect of the hook to any fish that uh, would be swimming by so maybe that's just a, a by the by. So for our next x-ray, uh, the gentleman who presented um, came in with a sudden onset of respiratory distress uh, in a patient admitted for lower limb fractures treated a number of days previously with an internal fixation. So sudden onset of respiratory distress in an adult male. So let's have a look at the images. So the first thing to note about this is a coronal uh, slice of a CT PA uh, and some of you might be drawn to this aspect of it I would say don't worry too much about that aspect this aspect is worrying me um, more and it's quite interesting because there seems to be uh, something that's blocking that patent tube and that tube being the trachea the black is obviously air black air and the uh, more white bits are more uh, opaque denser material so this um, spherical object is of concern so looking at it in different views you can see that in the same trachea, and noting you can see the little rings, the, the notches of the trachea here, but uh, there seems to be something um, stuck to the back, well, the posterior wall of the trachea. You can actually see um, parcel of the esophagus coming into view behind it. So we know it's not in the esophagus, we know it's in the trachea. Um, and that's a bit concerning, isn't it? So looking at it again on another slice of the trachea, and that interestingly shows the, the nice D-ring shape of the trachea the whole way down. But there is something um, adherent to the back of it. And you might go, my goodness, is that a nodule? What is it? But it's an acute respiratory distress in um, newly um, presenting in hospital uh, with a spherical-shaped object, object looks like a tablet, really, doesn't it? So like a pill. And actually, that is indeed what it turned out to be. It turned out to be a potassium supplement, a slow potassium supplement. It was a rather big tablet. So how he managed to inhale this tablet and get it stuck in his trachea um, is anyone's guess. But, but interestingly, this CTPA demonstrates a tablet lying independently uh, in the patient's trachea with changes of aspiration in both lower lobes, um, which are not really shown in this CT, but uh, a second tablet was visible in the stomach, actually. Um, and that was how the radiologist in this case, um, it was Associate Professor Frank Galliard, um, actually um, put that in. But... Um, it was confirmed on the CTPA and it was removed by a bronchoscope, so bronchoscopy to look in the lungs, and it was removed and it was a slow potassium tablet. So you can sort of see there was, um, th these these lung fields on a CT scan don't really show very well if there's any collapse consolidation, but it says that there was aspiration associated uh, changes in the um, dependent areas of the lungs. Now, in acute onset respiratory distress, one might expect this patient to have had a pulmonary embolus, thus he was having a CTPA, but it just goes to show on the balance of probabilities, there's always a small percentage to get through that is not uh, the, um, the um, Occam's razor, as it were. In an unrelated but similar x-ray, it is another lung field conundrum where a gentleman has presented with a cough. Now, the, there is obviously a opaque object which is down the right main bronchus. And we note that actually this is a good, this is a good learning opportunity, is that whenever one 
does tend to aspirate, if one does tend to aspirate, it tends to go down the right main bronchus because it is straighter and is not bent up with the curvature of the heart. The heart obviously occupies a bit of space here and pushes that left uh, main bronchus upward. Uh, so this is longer and straighter, this right main bronchus. So anything that you do tend to aspirate, one does tend to aspirate, tends to fall down it. And this is actually um, seen very well on a lateral film as well. So you can see that um, cap there. And this is actually a dental crown. It's a crown that the patient has aspirated accidentally. However, of note, there does not seem to be any distal collapse. Um, and one can actually see that, um, you know, the presentation of this um, gentleman with a cough um, doesn't actually correspond to any sort of consolidation or collapse of the lung further down. So there still must be air passage past it. So um, he's quite lucky, but I would imagine bronchoscopy and retrieval of that uh, would be a priority. Leaving anything like that in the lungs incurs the risk of aspiration pneumonitis distal collapse if that goes down any further it can collapse part of the lung whenever it occludes a more a more distal vessel so for our next x-ray uh, david Coute has uploaded the um this series which is of a patient that has been involved in a brawl a 20 year old male um young men are the highest um statistically the highest uh, incidence of trauma of um, of brawl related physical altercation trauma um, across the world so looking at this you can see that there is um, clearly um, a broken arm so we can see by identifying this further this is this is the right arm and um, can see ribs here you can see the clavicle up here just come into view you can see the glenohumeral joint and the shoulder blade posteriorly there you can see the uh, humeral socket up here and the humerus is shattered noting there are very important nerves that run down here in grooves uh, you can see the radius and ulna down here and the articulating joints but obviously there is a massive abnormality in the middle um, of this where there's tons of little tiny white dots which are very very radio opaque and a completely shattered um, bone there a completely shattered uh, mid humerus a comminuted open um, fracture so really what we can see here is there um, are lots of little lots of tiny pellets and this is actually very important um, in in more rural communities for example where shotguns um, are around so the shotguns uh, fire pellets actually and one of the learning points of this case as highlighted by the author is that pellets um, at short range can actually do significantly more damage than a simple bullet so a simple bullet would go through and penetrate and potentially cause a fracture and um, potentially at short range it might even enter the patient and leave the other side but in this case you've got a lot of energy spread out over a larger area and it has actually caused significant um, damage in this um, gentleman's arm. Our last x-ray and um, radiology images of this video in Bizarre x-rays um, is a two-year-old female who has swallowed foreign body. Her mother is unsure of the nature and this, this child uh, became increasingly unwell. So we can go on to have a look at the CT scans as well. And actually, if we scan down, there are already some ab abnormalities. If we go to the top um, you know, top of the um, spinal cord here and the trachea, we can see coming down on the bifurcum, there's obviously some ab ab abnormalities here um, on the right-hand side as well. Going into then a coronal lung window, this is an axial non-contrast view. The next is a coronal lung window. Uh, you can see that there are actually definite um, changes here and if we scroll through we can see the bifurcation of the trachea here um, with a lot of opacities uh, in the upper upper lobes here so there's something amiss going on so if we start at the front of the patient and work our way back so the front of the patient working the way back and see the heart obviously the um, lung windows here going through we can see an awful lot of um, consolidation or something here and we can start to see other um, artifact coming into view here and there is a suspicious looking object here in the lung fields looking at the axial lung window again um, that's the term going upwards there's a special object that's giving off a lot of streak artifact and we can actually see 
what's really going on whenever we look at this better window here. So this obviously represents something that's transecting quite a proportion of the thorax and the abdominal cavities as well, looking here in a sagittal non-contrast view and a coronal non-contrast view, you can start to see this transversing um, from the GI tract into the um, into the lungs. So in this case, the history is important. As you said, the mother had already said that um, there was um, um, the um, the patient had swallowed something. wasn't sure of its nature, but actually. Um, whenever you scroll down here you're immediately drawn to all this and it can actually miss uh, some of the larger aspects going down here so this is our first window uh, our first coronal lung window that we looked at so looking at the front of the ribs and back spinal cord and then you can see going forward that there's actually uh, changes here in the upper lobes middle lobes but actually there is a pen transversing right through the that might have actually um, sort of um, <laughs> skipped, skipped your eye. So what has happened in this is that the foreign body in the esophagus has perforated uh, the right lateral wall of the esophagus and um, entered into the chest cavity and caused a right upper lung lobe consolidation. When seeing the final aspect of the case study, their um, upper endoscopy revealed the pen in the upper esophagus perforating its lateral wall and was extracted. If you enjoy these sorts of videos, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon and look at more videos in the channel. You can also jump on to the next uh, video in Bizarre X-Rays.